Box JD here and today we've got this. This is the brand new Ishin E010S Pro. It's a 65mm FPV racer. Alright, let's open this up and have a little look. So as soon as you open up, manual staring you straight in the face. Let's take that out. Nice little bit of foam on the top. There's everything inside. So you have your accessory pack, you have your battery, you have your quadcopter and that is everything. Okay, let's put everything else to one side and let's just concentrate for now on this quadcopter. Here we go, this is it. Right, this is most definitely a different style quadcopter. As you can see, the body is in the shape of a shark. His two fins either side have got screws in and this is what holds the body down to the main frame of the quadcopter. So it certainly looks very different. Right at the front you have a cap which is covering up the the 800 TVL camera. Wow, that is very difficult to get off. Um, now behind there you have an 800 TVL camera. It's an M7 model. As we work our way back, as you can see, we have the shape of the shark, we have the fins, we have everything uh, everything to do with the shark there. We have a tail right directly at the back. The tail at the back is where the aerial should be, the antenna should be. So if that has come out, just pop that back in there like that. Directly underneath there, we have the battery connector. Now that battery connector connects to this battery, which is a 3.7 volt, 240 milliamp hour battery. So as this is a tiny whoop uh, FPV racer, that battery should be more than more than enough for this. You should, from that battery, get a good five minutes of life, uh, and it should charge within within an hour. So that in itself is not too bad. Now. As we've got this upside down, let's have a little look at these motors because these motors are very, very clever. Well, no, they're not. They are they're 615 brushed cordless motors. They're pretty much the standard motors that are inside these mini, these tiny whoops. We've seen them in the Ishin e, uh, QX65, uh, and we're probably going to see them in many, many more quadcopters further down the line. But there's something about these that I didn't notice on the, the Ishin, and that is that the base of these particular uh, motors are colour coded. So you have green down one side and you have black down the other. Not only that, but the cables are colour coded as well. So that should make it nice and easy when we come to replace a brushed motor in a little while. I'm, because no doubt I'm going to probably end up blowing one of these motors again. Same as I did on the Ishin QX65. So with these as well, I think it's going to be really easy to tell which ones are clockwise and which ones are anti-clockwise or, or counterclockwise. Right, that's very good. I like that. All in all, this comes in at a really nice little package. And I, I, I really like these tiny whoops. They're brilliant and they're superb to learn uh, acro and to learn different particular skills for your FPV racers before you get onto the big 180s uh, and, and bigger. So that is the quadcopter, but how much does this weigh? So let's get our little scales here and let's have a little look. So all in all, right, this with the battery is 29 grams. So that is your flying weight, 29 grams. Absolutely brilliant. Right, let's move that to one side. Now, as this particular um, this particular uh, package isn't the Flymo combo, so therefore you only have one battery, so therefore flight is going to be uh, quite limited, as I did say, to about five minutes. Uh, but fortunately, it has a pretty standard connector to it, so therefore we should be able to get more batteries for this, uh, well, actually very easily, uh, so you can extend that battery time should you go for the non combo uh, version of this particular quadcopter. Well that's it, that's quite nice. Um, I did say about a good point with the, the motors, now there is one bad point as well. Now the bad point is, is that in order to get at the bind button inside you've got to unscrew these two fins and take the top off uh, and then once you do that you can get at the bind button inside there. This is a BNF so therefore it is a bind and fly so therefore you have got to bind it to your a particular transmitter. I've got my Flysky i6 so therefore I've got the Flysky receiver inside here. Now there is one other point about this as well. When I looked on the website it did say that the configurator to use for this is base flight but in the manual it says it's beta flight so therefore I'm going to stick with what the manual says and I'm going to go with beta flight. So with that in mind folks let's just have a look at this beta flight configuration. 
Okay, now what we're going to do in beta flight is we're just going to go through and ensure that all the settings are set to their default settings and that nothing needs to be altered. It's always worth double checking. Most of these things do get set in the factory, uh, but it is always worth double checking just to ensure everything's set to how you want it to. So if you want to as well, even though everything is calibrated, you can calibrate the gyro here should you want to. Okay, so ports. UART 3 has to be set to Serial RX uh, so that it looks like that's already done. That's great. So then if it isn't, enable it and click save. Configuration. Here you can have the motors to disarm automatically or you can have them to automatically arm themselves when you bind the, the transmitter and hit the, the, the arm switch. I've chosen to disarm it and I've also changed the name of the quad to JD quad. Uh, now in power and battery there should be nothing in here that needs to be changed all this is set as standard same as PID tuning all default settings I'm not going to change anything there receiver likewise the same that has been already set up uh, for the fly sky just ensure that uh, AETR1234 is set as your main setting there now what I've done here is I've added uh, two extra modes so I've added I got angle horizon and band and I've added all of those to work under three different aux uh, switches um, so I've got aux 1, aux 2 and aux 3 gives me a different type of flight uh, you can alter that if should you want to add as many as you want to or to however many switches you have for motors nothing needs to get altered now for on screen display this is quite a strange one for this particular quad normally you can enable on screen display and you can move things around and have them however you want to on this particular quad copter you can't for some reason so you can try and enable it as I'm trying to do here and it just doesn't enable now I've set the units to, met to imperial from metric uh, you you can change whatever you want to the video style from PAL, NTSC or auto but I do find it strange you can't move things around uh, okay black box that's default and if you go to the CLI we can just type in version and it shows you the version of the software is 2017 December I'm not going to bother uh, looking for an update for this uh, but you can should you want to have a little look and just double double check that there's not a newer firmware file out there that can be uh, that can be uploaded okay so that's it quadcopter should be totally uh, configured now and everything is ready for us to take her on her first flight Okay, so pretty straightforward, pretty standard as we've seen in the past. Now, there are a couple of things you get with this. You get an accessory pack. Inside here you get four spare propellers, you get a USB charger, and you also get some Velcro straps in there as well. Is that Velcro? Yeah, it looks like Velcro straps in there as well. So that's inside the little accessory bag. Now inside this, um, this manual, it's quite large, basically just an A4 sheet. It goes into a bit of detail. You've got um, sort of bilingual on the front of it there, and then you've got plain English at the back. Now the plain English steps here talks you right the way through how to bind, how to get everything to work, and also the um, beta flight configuration as well, as well as the motor configuration should you need that. So once again, same as all the tiny whoops we've looked at, make sure you keep this handy, it will probably come in handy in a little while. So there we are, that is everything that you get. Don't forget to take the cap off the camera as well. Uh, so you get the quadcopter, you get your manual, and you get your little accessories pack there as well, folks. So, thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD, you've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.